Welcome back to the circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia for the feature race. 37 laps to come around this circuit and it is going to be a thrilling one we are hoping for. And after Henry Cordial's sensational sprint win today, I mean yesterday, is he going to go for the feature race today to make the double? I mean the first driver this season to do the double. We will see. It's going to be tricky though, but for all the drivers... Anything can happen for them. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to fasten your seatbelts and get ready for 37 laps of the Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya. Here we go then, to the right on your screen is Zane Maloney, and to the left hand side of your screen is Henri Cordiel, and we are going for the feature race in Barcelona, what a start, but you know what's the opposite of the lead, it's Teo Porsche, right there with them as well, a Watson leads into turn one, Porsche is there on the outside, Cordiel slowly close to making contact with Teo Porsche, but Porsche just hangs on the second place. What a start though. What a you know what's up. Look at the start Zane Maloney wanted from Paul. He's down to four. One with Virginia going backwards. The other one maintaining the lead. But this time it's a Yuma Awasa. What a start for Awasa. Third to first before he even got to turn one. And from Porsche too. Second. Up on six on the green before we got into turn one. Great start from those two. They are one two at the first lap of 37 here in this Barcelona Catalonia circuit. Owasa behind, sorry, just ahead of Porsche hanging into lap five. Porsche has got the straight line speed. He's going to go to the next side. Clips a tie onto the grass. Can he get past? And you go Owasa. They're side by side. Going through the first few corners, Owasa and Porsche side by side with each other. And still Owasa is hanging on to that lead. And Porsche, I might have taken the lead, but he's still, he's still got Owasa right there. They're side by side, Porsche and Owasa. Can the championship leader get past the race leader? This is a thrilling battle between the Dams and the ORT. The Red Bull Junior against the Sauber Junior. Owasa hangs on to the lead for the time being. Can Porsche get back at Owasa? He's going to go for it to the inside. Owasa will be hoping to fight back. And um, he's still there with them though. Porsche trying to go round the outside of Owasa. And Owasa pushes him off. Owasa has fought Porsche off the road. Porsche has. He's, he's still going. But he's down in 7th place now. That is disaster for the poor chair. He's now in 6th because he's back ahead of his teammate Victor Martins. But Owasa forced poor chair off the road. Mate, he forced me off. Copy Tao with your pod. you got Roy Nassani trying to get past Victor Martins. Mick Martins covers the inside line from Nassani. And while he's doing that, he's going for a move on his teammate. Can he get past him? Porsche goes wide and he does get through. Victor Martins, how about that from the Formula 3 champion? He has got past his championship leading teammate Martins up into sixth. This is a replay of Juan Manuel Correa going round and spinning his fan and his sport almost onto the gravel. Ah, uh, I keep having spins, mate. Looks like we've got a high tech going slowly. It's the number 10 car, it's Isaac Hadjar with a problem and he is parking his uh, high tech car up and he is out. Mate, I have no power, mate! No! What is going on with Frederick Vesti? He's now getting overtaken by not only Crawford but Novak as well, I think. Heading into turn one, no Crawford is ahead of Vesti going into. Turn one. What is just going on with Vesti? He's losing so much speed in that framer. 
Okay, mate, we can see that you've got a small issue with the car, like power getting lost, but keep going for now, we'll try and sort out this issue. Mate, I'm losing so much speed. Yeah, I know, but just finish the race if you can. So, Festy has got an issue with the car. We don't know what it is, but he's going to lose a huge amount of places. He might find himself down in last place soon, because Correo is catching Vesti uh, and the two Tridents. What is going on with that frame up? He's just losing so much speed. Yeah, Vesti is not liking the pace of that car in this race today. The man who's fighting for the championship in real life, not finding the pace in this virtual race here in Spain. And he's about to get overtaken by Clement Novak as well. They're side by side, the Trident and the Framer, and through goes a novel act to take 18th place. What can Vesti do to come back at the Frenchman? Will he make the move, or will Warren Stanek in the other Trident get past him? I think Stanek's going to get uh, Vesti here. Let's see as we ride on board with Stanek. He's going to go for a move on Vesti. Down the inside, Warren Stanek. Can he get past? He's right there with the Framer, and he's going to go to the inside of the Framer. Can Stanek get past Vesti? They're side by side, and he's a turn three, and Roman Stanek has got past Frederick Vesti. What is going on with that Framer? Another issue, this time it's for Clement Novalak, and the man who got ahead of Frederick Vesti earlier on is out. Oh, what was that? That was contact. With his teammate Roman Stanek, the teammates have collided. Novelak is out of the race. Stanek is still going and he's got damage though to his front wing. Don't know what happened there, but Novelak is out. <laughs> what the hell? Boop! I hit Roman while I was slowing. Um, I'm out. Sorry guys. Boop! We love this view. We really love this view as Paul Chess sends it to the inside of Jack Doohan. He gets the move done, and Teo Porcher is up into 5th place. It's P5, but car number 5. There's a huge train in the battle for 8th place, so it could get a very feisty and very busy. There as round goes Ralph Poshon. That is not what the Campos driver wanted. He was in 12th place, fighting for the points, and now he's lost his chances on points by spinning at turn 9. <sighs> Boop, so he comes spun. Ted, we have our first pit stop of the race, and it's Kush Mining. Yep, I can see him coming into the pit box. I mean, not one of the front rowers, but we'll see what he can do after this stop. So in comes the Indian driver, then the blue and white at Campos. What can he do? He's coming into the pit lane now, is Kush Mining. We're hoping that this is a good stop for him. Let's see, it's off going the red wall tyres, on go the white wall tyres. And this is an important strategy for him. A good stop, but... I think when the others coming for the Red Bull tyres later on, they're going to be much faster than Miney. But let's see what will happen. Meanwhile, Teo Porcher, we haven't seen it, but this is the replay of him getting past Zane Maloney. And he said thank you very much. Fourth place for the championship leader. Three, that can allow Porcher to go round the outside from turn four. Can the championship leader get past? And who could be second in the championship later on? Yeah. And Bigger Pound are side by side. And Paul Cher has got past the road in Carlin. Lovely move. But Sam Paul Cher is back up onto the podium places. He always gets in. Is he going to go for a move? We can see it. He's going for it. It's a third one. Yesterday's race winner against the man who's fighting for the win today. Can he get past? Oh, what's up? Yes, he can. Cordell takes the lead. And look at Sam Paul Cher. He's up into second place. But he's into the lead now for Amory Cordell. And the man who won the sprint race yesterday is looking good to win the feature later today. Lovely move for Cordell. He's loving it this weekend, isn't he? Oh, round, 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 Correa is going round again. He is round. Yeah, not what one round Correa wanted. And there's another cars coming. That's not what he needed. And a red flag. It's a red flag. Now that has changed things. Not Manuel Correa's sprint has brought out a red flag. Now that could change things. Let's get this race back on the way. Cordillo on the right. Porsche on the left. And we're racing again here in Barcelona. Oh, that stop. We've got Cordillo and Porsche. Porsche is trying to stay in the slip stream. Oh, that's what we call deal. He's going to go around the outside. Going into turn one. Porsche and Cordillo. They're side by side. 
I saw Paul Cher. They touched Cortell and Paul Cher have touched Wasson Leach. And it's another red flag. Unbelievable. Here's a replay of Paul Cher's start. Let's see what happened. Yeah, Paul Cher got a good launch. And did Cordial. And he's got the slipstream for behind Cordial. Picking up a dirty rubber from Cordial. Going into turn one. Paul Cher wanted to go round the outside. And then Cordial made him bump into him. What is he doing? Mate, what was that? And now here's the replay from Cordial's perspective. Wait for it. You feel like he got hit. And then out onto the gravel he goes. Mate, what is he doing? And for the third time, we are racing in Barcelona. A great start for Cordial once more. He's retaking the lead. Left as they start grabbing Cordial. And so for the power, he's moved away with uh, you know, Wasser. Cordial leads into turn one. Look at Paul Chef. Awasa and Malata, Fede Pauli has found wheels, but into second place goes Teo Porcher. He is loving that feed of the car, but Cordial is not the star. He's leading once more here in Spain. Lovely start. Restart, I should say, for Cordial. Back in front where he wants to be, but Porcher, though, has got pace in that ART. What's going to happen between them this time? We'll see. He's got the speed in that ART. He's going to make a move. Wow, the outside. Tony Porcher is going on. Harry Cordial. What can he do against the Belgian driver? They're side by side. Oh, they touched. They touched. Porcher and Cordial have come together. And that is disaster for both Cordial and Porcher. But the Pauli now leads from Juan Benavides. That is more drama. Is this guy stupid or what? Does he want to kill me? Mate, what the... He was not expecting this win, but he's about to get it. What a drive from Enzo Fisipaldi. He's back in the title fight. And for the second time this season, Enzo Fisipaldi wins in style. He takes the feature race in Catalonia. A beaten Brad Benavides and a Yuma Wassa for... The final spice is on the podium. Philip Aldido wins it. What a thrilling race that was. Yes! Come on! Let's go! Epic drive, Enzo. Epic drive. Second win of the year for Enzo Philip Aldi. He is absolutely elated with that. And the fastest lap as well. He will leave Barcelona as a title contender for him once more. Brad Benavidez, his second podium of the season, his first podium since Melbourne, and he is looking good with the pace of that PHM this season. And the Yuma Wassa completes the podium. Victor Martins fourth, Dennis Halger in fifth. Great try from him, finishing ahead of Zane Maloney. Sixth only for him, having started from Pearl. Oh, he's got a job to do if he wants to be back in the title fight. Nisani, Deruva, Le Leclerc, and Vesti, despite having a problem earlier on, completing the top ten. But that was a twisty, turvy beach race. Porcher still leads the championship, but now down to 26 points. Bitter Pauli is back to second in the championship, and the game is very much on. And in the team standings, Rodin Carlin are back in front, ahead of ART by 17 points. What's going to happen between those two teams for the next few rounds? We will be waiting, I'm sure. But that is the first half of the season complete. We will be back for the second half soon. That is Barcelona and done. We are back next for the Red Bull Ring. Hope you can join us in the Styrian Hills of Austria next time out when FIA Virtual Formula 2 returns.